So I want to talk about how we can work with JSON. Once we're getting JSON data back and that's all working smoothly, what are some considerations that are involved in working with it? Well, one of the first things we have to uh, acknowledge is if we're using JSON with, say, an MVC framework, and specifically the ASP.NET MVC framework, a lot of times we're not passing direct objects back and forth. We are passing view models back and forth. And so since the view is dependent on a view model and not necessarily a specific object, sometimes there are things we have to think about that maybe we don't have to consider when we're just dealing with very plain, very basic objects that we're passing back and forth. The first thing that we have to think about is serializing and deserializing. In other words, how do we get a view model into a format that JavaScript can understand? And probably the more complicated side of the equation, how do we get JavaScript into a format that ASP.NET will recognize as a view model? And in order to do this, we have to serialize and deserialize a lot of the times. Now, by default, the Web API is going to try to help us out. It has a built-in JSON deserializer. And for simple operations, that works just fine. But the more complex your view model gets or your object gets, and in real-world application development, it always gets more complicated than a demonstration, right? You have objects that are weird, objects that are nested inside of other objects, and weird recursion and relationship patterns. You're going to get stuff back from your ORM that's going to be chains and chains of data. And sometimes the default serializer and deserializer just aren't going to cut it, or even necessarily be able to do it. So we may have to take on some of this responsibility ourselves, uh, creating our own JavaScript objects and taking JavaScript objects and creating view models out of them. One method that's going to help us out is the JSON method. This is used server-side, and it is used to serialize objects into JSON. A lot of times, just using this method is going to be enough to get us the JSON that we need. There are other parameters we can pass into it, and there are other ways we can work with it to shape the JSON if we need to. But a lot of times, just the deliberate application of the JSON method will produce enough deserializing for you. Coming in on the back side, the serialize method in jQuery is something that can really save us a lot of time, too. If we have a JavaScript object, we can use the serialize method to put it into a format that our controllers are going to understand. So this is very important as we're building the data that a view model might use. We can use the serialize jQuery method to get that into a format that our controllers can accept and work with directly. We're not always going to have to do that. but we may have to rely on this method to get the job done, depending on how complex our view model is. Finally, I want to mention a JavaScript library that is extremely handy in these situations, and that's Knockout.js. Knockout.js is a JavaScript library that, like Modernizer and jQuery, is going to be set up for you automatically when you create a web API project in Visual Studio. It, it's so common in these kinds of applications that Microsoft has just decided to include it as part of the package. Knockout.js is a JavaScript library that basically creates a JavaScript version of your view model. And it sort of sits between your JavaScript and your server-side view model so that whenever you make updates to it, those updates are automatically pushed both ways. So if I am using Knockout, I have this in-memory version of my view model, if you will. And so when I make changes, the UI can automatically reflect those in real time without having to do postbacks or asking the server for more data or what have you. You, you might think of Knockout JS as, as like a, a traffic cop or something that sits between your server-side version of your view model and your JavaScript and just make sure that both parties are synced up with each other all the time in real time. So it's an extremely handy library. And a lot of times, if you go out on the web and look at example code for using the web a API, they will use Knockout.js for their templating and keeping that view model in sync. It keeps us from having to write a lot of the serialization, deserialization, and code to sync up these two entities. The Knockout.js just handles it all automatically, and so it becomes a very valuable library to add to your tool belt when you're working with JSON. Okay, so I want to show you how 
we can use JSON and view models in web applications and the, the kinds of things we need to do to make that happen. I'm also going to be using Knockout so you can see how handy a tool it is, but I'll also kind of explain as we go where the differences might be if you're not using Knockout. So what I want to do first is I want to create a page where when the user clicks this button that it gets a list of our book data and formats them in nice neat HTML here on the screen. And we're going to get that book data from the web API. Well, one of the things I've done to help us out, of course, I've got jQuery and I also have Knockout added as one of my scripts. And what I've done here is something that you might not have done before. This is what we call an HTML template. And this is something that Knockout allows us to do very easily. You use the script tag and you give it an ID, which you probably haven't done with script tags up to this point. And you set the type equal to text HTML as opposed to text JavaScript. It looks a little weird, but basically what we're doing is we're trying to find a way to take a block of HTML and make it directly usable by our JavaScript.